130 years ago in our court, in our county, we started with a single judge. Today we have 53 judges, nine commissioners, and north of 370 employees. Our county, our superior court, judges and commissioners, hear and resolve thousands of cases, criminal, civil, family law, dependency, and juvenile, every day and every year. Today we celebrate Judge Whit Martin and Judge Steiner as they're formally sworn in, but both have been working here since April 15th. Judge Wiggs Martin in our dependency court with her bailiff, Lottie Corderson, and Judge Steiner in the general civil and criminal rotation in the Kent Courthouse, the Mailing Regional Justice Center, with his bailiff, Ayako Seto. So let me start with a Judge Wiggs Martin. Judge Wiggs Martin, you are the fourth judge in Department 17. That department was created in 1955, and that first judge there was George Ravel, who was the uh, second in the generation of three generations of a storied legal family in, in King County. But the first uh, Ravel was a famous U.S. attorney. He was 28 years a judge, a colonel who worked with uh, Patton and Bradley in World War II and heard many cases, including the Dave Beck tax evasion trial that sent Dave Beck, the Kingster president, to prison. Uh, and he was also a National Conference of Trial Judges president. Uh, his son was King County Executive. After George Ravel was, of course, as many of you know, Donald Haley. Donald Haley was both someone many of us appeared in front of and was a friend and a colleague to many of us. And many of us recently, sadly, attended his funeral, presided by the Reverend Je George Davenport, who hopefully is here somewhere in the audience. He came from Roanoke, Louisiana, worked in the rice fields with his father. His father actually served on one of my juries uh, when I was a lawyer. Uh, he moved to Seattle, graduated from UW Law School. He had a distinguished legal career. He was the president of the Superior Court Judges Association, the chair of the American Bar Association National Conference of State Trial Judges, and of course, one of the founders of the Laura Miller Bar Association with one of our other great judges, one of our famous presiding judges, Charles B. Johnson. And your immediate predecessor, seated behind me to my left, Wesley St. Clair will be swearing you both in shortly. Judge St. Clair, of course, attended Yale and Uni University of Washington or law school. He became a district court judge in 1991 and later was presiding judge of King County District Court. He was appointed to our superior court. He was active in drug court locally and nationally. He was one of our technology wizards and helped advance the court in technology. He was uh, the chief of juvenile court in a very difficult <coughs> time for our court, just very recently. He was the 2003 KCBA Judge of the Year and 2009 King County Martin Luther King Humanitarian Award winner. So, you have big shoes to fill. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm so moved as I look out and I see everybody here supporting me. And those who know me know, the tears will flow <laughs> so I'm going to try to keep it in check. But when I was in high school, uh, I was my senior year, it was two days after my birthday, and my family suffered a very tragic loss. My older sister was. I don't like in a very unexpected and violent way. And it took a very deep toll on my family. And cynicism crept in. And for those of you who have lost someone in that way, you know it's very hard to remain hopeful. And trust that the world can be a peaceful world and a just one. And I can very consciously remember the moment when I said, every day after 24, I'm going to live with purpose and I'm going to do something in this world to contribute in some small way to 
to increasing peace and bringing about justice. And I said every day after 24, I was going to devote to my sister. <laughs> and I believe I've done that very proudly. I started my career in public service in honor of my sister. And I worked for 14 years as a public defender in a county that I think has the best public defense services in the nation. And I was very proud to work along colleagues who were committed and dedicated to doing their part to increase justice in the community. And I was very humble and honored to work with some of the most vulnerable members of our community people who suffer from mental illness and chemical dependency issues, and deep issues of poverty. And daily they inspire me, those people, to continue to do good work and try to bring about a more positive community. And I was also inspired by everyone who works in the system. I look out and I see colleagues from the prosecutor's office, people who work in our courts, court staff, other judges, um, people who work in the jails directly with clients, everyone doing their own part in order to try to make this a more peaceful society and a more just society. And I feel very proud to have worked along all of these people. And I want you to know as I look out and I see so many of you here and I'm so moved by your confidence in me that each of you has touched me in a way that is profound, and each of you has impacted my life in a way that I cannot express in words. And I'm very grateful for each of you and your support of me. I am <coughs> so proud to have joined this bench. This bench is incredible. Everyone on this bench, and you benches that you see, has supported me, everyone has reached out to me, everyone has made themselves available to me as a resource. It's a wonderful bench to have joined. It's, it's unique because I appear before most of these judges as a lawyer for many years. So I'm still adjusting, but they've been very um, gracious to me and I appreciate all of I am so grateful for my team that I work with. I see Brandon, I see Kevin, and where is Latia? Right. <laughs> they roll me down every day, and I'm so grateful. I have landed in the best spot in dependencies, and I'm so grateful for each of you. I really appreciate your patience with me as I learn and your support of me as well. My parents are my My dad doesn't even cry. And he almost in tears. <laughs> girlfriend Atreya, who gave that beautiful poem, who has been with me for more than 20 years. We met an undergraduate. She's also a lawyer. She works in Pierce County. She's also an advocate for justice. Um, and I just so appreciate you and the support that you give me. And my children. sacrifice for me to be able to do this work 
many long hours away from home to do this work. And I'm so grateful for each of you for loving me unconditionally and for supporting me as I do this work. I love you. I, every year, I go to my children's school and I participate in career day. And I have a big family, so I've done this for many years. <laughs> I still have a few more years to go. <laughs> and this year, it's fourth and fifth graders. And I uh, talk to them about being a judge. And I ask them if they knew what a judge did, and they did. It was very remarkable. And I ask them, um, you know, what do you want in a judge? What things do, would you want in your judge? Um, the judges who served them in King County. And they said, they were very insightful. They said, I want my judge to be smart. <laughs> I want my judge to be nice and not yell at people. <laughs> I want my judge to let everybody speak and listen to everybody. And I want my judge to make a decision and I want my judge to be and every day that I am on the bench, and every day that I have the privilege of doing this job, and serving the community in this capacity, that is what I will aspire to do. Thank you all for coming to support me in this moment. She sat at the bottom of the steps outside of the RJC. The day was done, the last hearing concluded. She had seen her client off, and she thought she'd take a moment to pause. Oddly, a little girl approached, sweet looking, curious, somewhat sad. Little girl, do I know your name? She asked. Do you hear me? Shh, please don't cry. Let me try to help you. Have a seat next to me. I will listen and try to understand. With wide, penetrating eyes, she seemed too wise and hurt for her youth. Do I know the word justice? Yes, I know the word justice. Well, it's difficult to say what it means. Do I dream about justice? Actually, you know what? I do. What do I dream? Let me see. Do you like rainbows? 
I dream of justice in the color of rainbows. Oh, you like that? Yeah, me too. Bright, vibrant colors. And yes, I agree with you. Everyone should have a rainbow. Hello, young man. They greeted the boy that neither the lady or the little girl knew. How are you? Oh, would you like to join us too? We were just talking about justice. I know you're right. That's a big word. Sounds boring, annoyed the little girl replied. It's not boring if you've never had to fight for it. There was a long, awkward pause. Then the little boy said, well, can you tell me about justice too? We were just saying that it's like a rainbow. Really, he asked. Well, does everyone have one? The lady replied. I think everyone should have one. Well, what color do you see most? Mm, I think I see red the most. Yes, definitely red. Why, the little girl asked. Well, I think of people hurting. I think of people knocking at the courthouse doors for help. Some people have been helped by lawyers. What's a lawyer? Well, mostly those grumpy looking people dressed up real fancy and holding big bags of files. Oh, I've seen a lot of them. Well, yes. Then there are others, those that meander through the halls on their own, skilled by the repetition of having had to be there before. But others, most of the time, are lost, trying to find their color of justice, standing at the very threshold of it, arms outstretched, so close, but still so far, tired, exhausted, disappointed, frustrated. That sounds so sad. Do you ever see blue, the little boy said? Yes, I see blue a lot. Like a father crying to see his child, a foster mom preparing for a toddler to return home, a family sad because a person died, but they can't cry yet because they're fighting over a will or money. But blue could be happy too, right? The boy asked. Justice can be a happy color too, though, right? Oh yes, it can. And there should be purple, he said. I think there should be purple. And why is that? It's pretty. And the colors should talk, and they should listen to one another. That really got the lady's attention. Now that indeed is interesting. Why? The little boy seems to really eagerly understand. Well, the same they should listen, because then they can make more colors. They can make more justice if they listen and see each other. The little girl smiled. I like that. Does a rainbow have black in it, she asked. Yes, I think a rainbow can have black in it as well. It should. When you dream about justice, you also see the color black then? The lady paused for a moment. And she said, of course. When I dream of justice, I also see black. She turned to the little boy and said, and I see you. She turned to the little girl. She said, I see you as well. She pointed to the various people along the street passing, from the homeless Asian man on the sidewalk, to the power suits, to the professionally clothed black male in a wheelchair, to the Latina woman greeting her white male colleague. After pointing out each of them, then naming something different, she turned back to both of them. And when I see them, I see you. Wow, so you dream about me? Yes, I dream about you, and I dream about each of them. The little boy smiled happily and then looked confused. Does that mean I'm justice? The little girl said, no, silly. It means you're part of the rainbow. And when we're all part of the rainbow, that makes justice. The lady watched them both walk off into the directions from which they came. She smiled, thinking, it's not perfect, but it's a great beginning. And so is today. <laughs>